So this device is used to measure the mass of the Earth. So let's let's see what we have here. There's a very thin cable running down to a mirror. If you can see the mirror in there, and that's attached to the cable. And then you have a cross arm right here with two small masses on it. And when I pull these things down, then those two masses can rotate. And you can use that to measure the mass of the Earth. Let me show you how. So here is a diagram showing two different masses, M1 and M2. There is a gravitational force attracting these two masses, F. We'll call it F. It's really a vector, and they, they both have that force pulling on them. So if that's mass M1, that's mass M2, and their centers are a distance r apart, then the gravitational force attracting them is some constant g, the product of their masses, m1 times m2, divided by the distance between them squared, r squared. And we know we actually know this constant g from this experiment. This is called the Cavendish experiment. Okay, So it's a very small constant. So this gravitational interaction is very, very, very small. So here's what we do. This is a top view. We take a bar with some small masses on it. I know the masses. I put, put some large masses right here, this, and then I want to measure the rotation of this bar due to this interaction. So these two masses will rotate, and if I shine a laser on that mirror, then I can see how that laser dot moves even if I have a small movement of the bar. And that's what we have here. So I take my two masses. These are known lead masses. I can put them right here and right there. That should be tight. And it's not, it's not free to move right now. These cups hold it to prevent it from getting damaged. So if I move it in this position, the bar in there should rotate that way. And then if I move it in this position, it should rotate this way. And if you know the tension, the torsional spring constant, how much it takes to twist that cable, then by measuring how much it deflects, you can measure the gravitational force between these masses. And then you can find the gravitational constant and you can use that to find the mass of the earth based on weight of objects because if I have this mass it's interacting with the earth and if I know that mass of this object and I know the force then I can find the mass of the earth so it's kind of a hard experiment to show in real life because uh, it's very sensitive so you would you would take a laser I actually have a laser right here and I'd shine it you can see the laser maybe you see it so you see the lasers coming in here and it reflects off to a wall. Now, it takes a while for the bar to settle in. It oscillates a little bit and then it takes a while to settle in. And then once I do that, I can mark the position. I can rotate the balls the other way and then watch that dot move. But again, it takes a long time to do that. Um, this is related to a uh, another trick. Let me show you this trick real quick because it's, it's very cool. If I push this down right here and I take a pencil, and you can do this at home, take a pencil and barely balance it on the edge of a table. And it's just got to be just about to fall off. Take some practice. Okay, there. This pencil is just like the bar in there. Since it's hanging horizontally, any tiny sideways forces can get it to move. Normally, you wouldn't be able to see the gravitational force between this the the large mass and the other one but now i can even blow a tiny little bit right here and get it to move and you can pretend like it's magic if you want see all i did was blow on it and it moved so it's the same thing up here so this bar in here rotates to measure the gravitation force and that's it there you go